As you know, computer engines have pretty much solved the game of chess, as there is no human being able to defeat them consistently. That's why we use them to evaluate games, since they know exactly what to do to win and they make virtually no mistakes. The only problem is we don't play chess the same way a computer does. So sometimes it's difficult for us to understand what the computer is doing and sometimes it's difficult for the computer to understand what we are doing. When reviewing games years ago, annotators used to place symbols next to a player's move to sign significant game events. A great move that turned over a losing game, an unfortunate mistake that decided the match, or an idea so subtle, so difficult to find, yet so powerful that their opponent couldn't expect it. A brilliant move. I bet you can see from that description the first challenges when deciding brilliancy. Judging a move as brilliant is ambiguous and quite subjective. Chess.com players are familiar with a range of move classification in the automatic game reviews. Other platforms stay on a more discreet commentary when providing automatic game reviews. While as for chess.com, they have not made public the exact criteria on which their system decides whether a move is brilliant or not, but they have an extensive description in their support page for their classification of moves. They use a system they call expected points that they describe as follows. Expected points uses data science to determine a player's winning chances based on their rating and the engine's evaluation, where 1 is always winning, 0 is always losing, and 0.5 is even. And there is a table that shows their criteria for 6 classes of moves from best to blunder. Basically, if your chances of winning stay the same, you found the best move. If they decrease around 2%, that's still an excellent move and a 20% decrease or more is a blunder. Why are there not brilliant and great moves in this table? Well, that's because it's easier to say, hey, you made a blunder, than saying, hey, that was brilliant. It's not a matter of arrogance, but a matter of continuity. Let me explain. These chess engines are created using a set of rules and assumptions that are necessary to make a good player machine. To make a good player machine, you want to make sure it plays perfectly, and to make sure it plays perfectly, you assume their opponent is the best possible, that is, a perfect opponent. Therefore, this is an implicit assumption, which name is, you guessed it, perfect play. Both sides always choose the best move. The huge depth of the evaluation implies continuity with respect to the development of the game, that is, Evaluation should not change much between a small number of moves. It's not natural that, for example, white makes a move and suddenly the evaluation changes abruptly in its favor. So when machines play, evaluation is continuous, because perfect play implies continuity. But when people play, there are discontinuities. This is why it's so easy for the computer to tell you when you messed up because it suddenly found an abrupt change in evaluation. On the other hand, when you are doing very well, the computer will only see continuity, that is, the evaluation stays the same. So a brilliant move is not the opposite of a blunder, in the sense that a brilliant move doesn't necessarily come with a significant increase in your advantage, but rather it is a best move that's not obvious at all. Sacrifices often may fit well this category, so chess.com adopted the following definition. Brilliant moves and great moves are always best or nearly the best move in the position, but are also special in some way. A brilliant move is when you find a good piece sacrifice. There are some other conditions, like you should not be in a bad position after a brilliant move, and you should not be completely winning even if you had not found the move. So what happens with the brilliant moves that are not sacrifices? Well, you probably will just see them as best moves in their reviews. It can also happen that a pretty standard piece sacrifice gets the brilliant mark even if it's a routinary thing that most good players will know. It's also worth mentioning that high-rated players will face more rigorous criteria to have moves marked as brilliant than us low-rated players. It's kind of disappointing that in chess it's so easy to find your mistakes and point it out, 
while it's so difficult to recognize your best moments. But I hope now you will get a clearer idea of what is the meaning of those marks in your game reviews and maybe this will help you get better insights from your games. Thanks for watching.